boiled eggs with a soldier that will make your taste buds stand to attention. There's something quite nostalgic about a boiled egg. It's something that's never lost its magic when you slice that top off and dunk that soldier into the yolk. You can't mess with a deliciously runny yolk, but this is what I like to dunk in it. An anchovy soldier. Anchovies into pesto mortar. No salt, naturally. Yeah, anchovies are very salty, so just a touch of pepper. Rich in omega-3s, the amazing tinned anchovy is a natural flavour enhancer, and I use it to pepper many a savoury dish, from roast lamb to the humble toasted soldier. Grind them to a really nice, smooth paste. The smell of that is almost like being at the seaside. Now, get your soft butter, and just put half the butter in first. 50-50 is the way, 50% anchovy, 50% butter. That way, you've got that real nice, salty creaminess. Mix that up. Mmm, that's absolutely delicious. Trust me, finishing that anchovy butter on a slice of grilled fish, I'm in heaven. The bread. This is a sourdough. Delicious, very crusty. Take four nice slices. Now, get that pan nice and hot. A couple of tablespoons of that anchovy oil into the pan. And then get your bread and lightly fry each side. The smell of the anchovy oil is incredible. Take that out. Now, bring your water up to the boil. The secret of softly boiling an egg is to place them into the water gently, on a spoon, in, and just tilt so they don't hit the bottom. Nice and light. Up to the boil, count to five, turn the gas down. Is it four and a half minutes? Is it five minutes for a soft boiled egg? I've cooked thousands of them, and every time it's four and a half minutes. Whilst that's boiling, get your bread and spread that on there. That is incredible. Chopped parsley brings that kind of freshness. It goes brilliantly well with the anchovies. Hear that crunch on. I'm sorry, but I can't resist. Oh, my God. Right. Gas off. One. Beauty in. Two. I feel like a five-year-old again. This is that moment when you open the vault and that little magic inside is all yours. Mm. There's a great twist on a great classic. Wow. Perfectly soft boiled eggs with dressed up anchovy butter soldiers. I've smoked haddock and spinach baked eggs. Smoked haddock, one of my favourite fish. Delicious, highly sustainable, packed with protein, lightly smoked. And it's not a dye smoke, there's a big difference. So you haven't got that bright yellow tinge. So much better. Next, baby spinach. It's a spinach that's very young, full of zinc, great flavour. Little teaspoon of olive oil, knob of butter. That little touch of oil stops the butter from burning. It looks like a lot of spinach, but it's going to disintegrate almost by two thirds. When I'm cooking spinach in butter, I open up the top of my pepper mill so the pepper becomes almost like sort of cracked pepper, not so fine. Once your spinach has reduced down by two thirds, add in your cubes of smoked haddock. Tarragon. It's got that nice vinegary flavour, quite tart. Pick off the little buds from the stalks. Keep all of these. I'm grateful when you're making a tarragon vinegar. Red wine vinegar, tarragon stalks in. Chop your tarragon into your creme fraiche. Little season. Now, grain mustard goes brilliantly well with haddock. Incredible. This mustardy, herby creme fraiche will work equally well partnered with grilled chicken. The haddock's starting to flake. Because it's smoked, lightly cured, it cooks so quickly. Your creme fraiche. Nice. Now, it's almost like the beginning of the perfect fish pie. But as opposed to putting pastry on top, the eggs are going to bake on top, so you've got this wonderful egg crust. Turn the gas off. Now, just crack your eggs around the outside. Just a little twist of pepper. Get the remainder of your creme fraiche and put a little dollop in between. That adds richness to the egg whites, into the oven at 180 for 10 to 12 minutes. 
Whilst the haddock and eggs bake together, I can knock up a simple spring onion garnish. And professional kitchen chefs refuse to use the top of the spring onions, but I love that nice dark green flavour. It's less harsh than the white. The smell of baked mustard. You can't beat. That is beautiful. Spinach has almost melted in with a haddock. Now just sprinkle your spring onions. That gives it that really nice sharpness. Wow. My ultimate hearty breakfast, smoked haddock and spinach baked eggs. So packed with protein and iron, you'll be raring to dive into the day ahead. Of Eggs Benedict with crispy parma ham. The secret behind a great Eggs Benedict is in the hollandaise. So, get your pan on, because I'm going to cook our hollandaise over a rolling boil with a glass bowl. Butter, just put it on to melt. Three egg yolks. Separated from the white, tarragon vinegar. Pop that into the eggs. If you can't get tarragon vinegar, any white wine vinegar will do. Just as long as you've got that acidity in there, give some bite to the hollandaise. Put your bowl over the rolling water and just start whisking. If the eggs had direct contact with the gas, hollandaise will become scrambled egg. Once you've got that nice creamy texture, a nice thick sabillon, start adding your butter. Nice and slowly. A couple of tablespoons of butter in and give that a really nice mix. If you don't whisk it enough, the egg yolks don't take the butter. It causes it to split. More butter. Using a big balloon whisk like this one makes it easier to incorporate air and helps prevent your mixture from separating. All the butter in. And the best way to keep hollandaise nice and warm is just leave it to sit over that nice warm water bath and it just keeps that a really nice room temperature. A nice pinch of salt, fresh pepper, and then fresh lemon juice. That just really makes it vibrant, exciting. I want it like a sort of thick custard. I just want it to coat the back of the spoon so it's like you're giving the, a nice glossy texture to your beautiful poached egg. Now, as the base for the Eggs Benedict, you cannot beat English muffins, but the ham, I'm going to change. I'm going to use the most amazing parma ham. Get your pan nice and hot into the pan. It's like posh rashes of bacon. Beautiful. Mm. Parma ham fried nice and crisp like that is incredible. Beautiful in salads. Fantastic for Eggs Benedict. Now keep that pan nice and hot. I want all that flavour from the parma ham left in there. And rather than toast my muffins, I want to put the muffins into the pan. I want them sucking up all that wonderful flavour from that crispy parma ham. Make sure your muffins are toasted nicely. This will prevent them going soggy later. Look at that. Nice and crisp. Now, water on to boil for the eggs. Nicely seasoned, really important. And then just a little splash of vinegar in the water. That helps to set the egg white in the minute you crack it in. While the water heats up in the pan, there's time to get organised. Lay a nice slice of ham on the base. Now, water's brought up to the boil. Turn it down and then spin your water around, like a little whirlpool. Then get a little cup. So you just drop the cup in and look what happens to the egg. Gets caught up in the turbulence of the water. The secret is not to boil the water rapidly, because the strength of the boil can literally explode your egg. As they start to move their way up to the top of the water, that's a indication that they're cooked. Take off any excess little bits of egg white and then out onto a piece of tissue paper. That just drains off excess water. That stops your muffin from going really soggy. But look, they're like little beautiful mozzarella balls. Give them a little season. Lift them onto your crispy parma ham. Beautiful. Now, Get a nice spoon of your hollandaise. Glaze over. Try and do it in one, glazing over the whole egg. When I tell Jack, Holly and Megan and Matilda that we're cooking Eggs Benedict for breakfast, they bolt down the stairs. And let's be honest, who wouldn't run to sit in front of those? special occasion breakfast that would make anyone feel spoiled.
Eggs Benedict with crispy Parma ham. Beauties.